Hi guys, welcome back to well, my kitchen. Uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be making some D&D ice tiles because I need them for Rhyme of the Frost Maiden and I'll be running that pretty soon. So we're going to take our XPS foam that we picked up to make our table on and convert it into some tiles. Should be lots of fun. Enjoy guys. So first things first. We have to cut down those massive sheets into something usable. I'm thinking maybe some 12 by 12 ice tiles would be pretty good. So, let's get started. To make 12 inch cubes, I'm using my set square to make uh, 12 inch marks on it and just lining those up so I get a square. Now I don't expect you guys to have a carpenter square handy, so just measure using a ruler from one specific side and you should be good. On to the cutting portion of this task now. Uh, I just use a utility knife that is put out to around 3 inches or so, doesn't have to be much longer than that. Um, but we are cutting through inch thick foam, so we want to take multiple slow passes using our straight edge to do so. Now I have a inch thick foam here, and that is actually not what I would recommend for this project. I would suggest getting a half inch foam if you have access to that. It's going to be much easier for you to cut with your straight edge and knife and also still give you the detail and pack up a little bit tighter than this final product will. Matching all of our sides up, I was looking for the tightest connection between all the points. However, due to tear out and not using a very sharp utility knife, I ended up deciding to take things over to my Proxon cutter. This would turn out to be a massive mistake, and now I have a whole bunch of shingle tiles, I suppose, or thin strips to do the side of a building. Not sure what I will make with all those, but I certainly have a lot of them. The takeaway from all of this is that you do not need expensive equipment. It's nice to have, and is great for some tasks. But in a lot of cases, it's better to just use a simple knife that's really sharp and a straight edge to get everything nice and square and to make something cool. Now in order to texture our foam to make it look like broken ice, I just use a block of wood that will leave a nice square right angle in it, that way it looks like broken, fractured, segmented pieces. Uh, just whack it like crazy and you'll get the texture you want. Okay, magnet time! So we are going to be joining these boards together with some very strong 6mm neodymium magnets. Um, you don't need to necessarily use this one, but I find it's the strongest and gives the best hold. Now to make our holes, all we'll need to do is line our boards up, put little notches on the surface, and make sure that we center our holes. To make the holes, I have a very simple process of just using a needle, heating it up to the flame, and then melting the hole in about the center location. It doesn't have to be super accurate, but uh, it is important that it's aligned with our marks on the surface. And now we just have to glue them together, and that's pretty much it. Just make sure the magnets are the same polarity, so they don't uh, repel each other. Just double check that every time you put a magnet in. Pretty important. And uh, cover it with a bit of glue, and you're good to go. Now we are finally at the stage where we can begin painting, and the first thing I like to do is apply a base layer, 
and I'm going to be using a old crafter's trick of mixing a bunch of paint with some Mod Podge. Now the ratios here do not have to be anything precise at all. Just make sure that whatever you're mixing into your Mod Podge, you are able to pigment it enough that the color shows through because the Mod Podge will of course dry clear. So if you don't have enough paint, you're going to have a very dull base color. In my case here, I've gone up for about 50-50. And of course, we will be mixing this furiously. Make sure you get all the sides, the bottom, everything. You do not want this undermixed. To give you an idea of how long this lasts, the amount that we made here will probably cover two to three times the amount of boards that we have in front of us. So we need a few things to start. We'll need our Mod Podge, we'll need a brush, and a bit of water to go along with it. I'm using a bit of a weird brush for this. It's a fan brush, which is not generally intended for this application, but it's the brush I had with the largest surface and would cover this the fastest. So when we're applying this, we're going to want to be mixing it with a little bit of water. That way we can remove as many streaks as possible and the rest of it is just a repetition of this phase. One technique that I do want to point out to you is what I'm doing here. Uh, this is a technique I picked up from painting canvases, and that's to do long strokes in a singular direction, and then switching that to the horizontal direction to that, and you apply very little pressure, that way you don't create any streaks in your painting. With all of our pieces base coated, it's now time to apply the next layer of paint, which in this case is a nice blue for a icy undercoat. Now the white base coat will allow this blue to really pop and not have any problems with vibrancy. This next step that I really want to highlight is how lightly I am touching the canvas. My brush is hardly touching the surface at all, and this is a sort of technique that allows you to remove even more of those brush strokes. to our final step in the process, and that is going to be a very heavy white dry brushing. I am using a watercolor blending brush. Uh, I've also used this brush for oil paintings. This is not necessarily its intended purpose, but we're going to need to apply a lot of white paint to the surface here. So this brush is going to come greatly in handy. And with another smaller brush now, we can highlight each of those cracks individually with a bit more white paint, that way they just pop that little bit more. However, we will be going over this again with even more white paint because we want it to look like snow covered ice. So the white here is really going to get piled on and it's going to make the final thing look fantastic.
And here we are. Some beautiful ice tiles for your next D&D campaign, and some that I'll be using as well. They look awesome. Well, that's everything for today. I hope you've enjoyed, and I've enjoyed making this for all of you. Hopefully your next D&D session goes as well as mine. And let me know if there's anything you'd like to see made in the comments. Thanks, guys. Bye.